So, Andrew, is it possible to define depression? It is, and we do, um, but I have an increasing difficulty with, with an overall unifying, unifying diagnosis in as much as uh, people's ex uh, experience of depression is many and various. I think increasingly I realise that, I think we all realise that one person's experience is entirely different from someone else's. Nevertheless, we have to have some sort of working diagnosis. So um, we have a condition now termed um, major depressive disorder, um, which encompasses a range of symptoms of depression. So you can't say someone easily has or hasn't with a blood test, for example, as you can do with diabetes. Um, but what we do is we, so there's many features of depression, some of which everyone has, everyone will have had at some point in their lives. So um, feeling low, um, feeling very inactive, sluggish, not interested, not motivated, unable to concentrate, tired, poor sleep, not wanting to eat, maybe losing weight, um, maybe feeling guilty about it. So all these things um, are normal characteristics, but if you have too many at one time, um, that's what we term uh, depression. And um, it's almost like a tick box or not a tick box? It is a bit like, a tick, a, bit like a tick box. Yeah. Although um, the quality of your experience is, is what... So I wouldn't add up your, if you came to me as a patient, add up and say that does or doesn't constitute depression. It's more to do the quality of, or, or depth of your experience of those, um, those symptoms. Nevertheless, we do tend to add up and we categorise broadly into, into a mild form of depression, uh, moderate and severe. And that will determine how we manage and treat. And do, do you think it's on the rise? Do you, fi do you find that you're, fi you're meeting more patients with depression than you did, say, I don't know, 10 years ago? Yes, yeah, undoubtedly. I think everyone would agree with that. And there are many reasons for that. Um, uh, one of which is, and I think uh, uh, Britain's been described as the uh, depressive capital of Europe. We, we don't do well on depression. And there are many reasons for that, uh, and to do with societal reasons. Um, but also, um, the good thing is that people are more ready to come forward and, and seek help. We're trying to destigmatize. De stigmatize and then the, the stigma, we've had that yeah. stigma. And that's a constant battle, and we're constantly trying to uh, lessen that, do away with that, be aware of it and manage that. Um, but that's a constant battle, but it's certainly on the rise. In terms of figures, um, and there's big wild, uh, wide variation across the world, uh, Japan seems to have the lowest incidence, I guess many reasons for that, of about 3% over someone's lifetime of having depression, whereas in America it's about 17%, so quite a difference. Here it's about 10% chance over your entire lifespan of having a significant bout of depression. One of the texts that we were looking at was uh, Burton's um, book about melancholy, which dates from 1621. And I love that because it seems to me that the advice he gives mm. is not wholly dissimilar to what I feel a, a contemporary GP would give. So he says things like exercise, um, healthy diet, mm. talk to a pal, right. um, what's the other word? have meaningful work. Yeah, I mean, do, meaningful it, work does that reading, resonate? Yes, absolutely. And I think that's very, very similar to what we prescribe now. And we have um, modern uh, pharmacological treatments as well and psychotherapy, counselling. So, but I mean, broadly, those things are what we start with and those things are what we often rely on. And those things rely on long term as well. Can anyone be affected by depression? Uh, I think anyone can, anyone can be, absolutely. And often unexpectedly, um, and I think it's helpful when, when such people write about, um, write about their experience. So William Styron, um, a hugely uh, successful uh, writer, um, so he wrote Sophie's Choice amongst many other extraordinary novels. Um, and he, I think the book starts with him uh, at a prize giving and he can't, can't go, no interest, completely shocked by how he's feeling and he just feels, and, and it took him by surprise. So, I mean, anyone can do. Now, what would we have called it? Because I'm quite fascinated by the history of depression and the term, because it, in Shakespeare's time, as you well know, they talk about melancholy. Mm. And then I know Samuel Johnson does actually talk about depressed spirits and famously talked about the black dog for his own battles with mm. depression. Um, so when did that gain currency, that word depressed? Was that, was that a 20th century thing? I think my understanding is more of a 20th century a description of what has always uh, existed, whether one calls it sadness, um, melancholia, we would, we, we, we used to uh, term, broadly defined depression as endogenous, so arising from within, and what one would call melancholia, you know, for no reason I feel this oppressive sadness, as opposed to say reactive depression, when you suffer bereavement or something awful happens, something traumatic happens, uh, and then depression follows, and that's explicable, 
but the course of those two are quite different. I think Hamlet's quite interesting on that, which is another mm. one of our texts. Yeah. So, um, because Ham Hamlet talks about putting on an antic disposition, pretending to be mad, but in fact, he's clearly somebody in the grips of depression yeah. as a result of losing a loved one. Do you see that sort of thing happening? Absolutely, yes. Um, and the challenge is, is not, not to miss depression itself, but also not to confuse the two. And there's massive overlap between a normal human grief reaction and a depressive illness. So one can slide into the other, but they don't necessarily follow. And someone with many features of depression who's, who's grieving um, is not depressed. And therefore, it's, it's, it's probably wrong in many of those situations to say treat them medically. With, with, uh, well, antidepressants I just wanted to ask about the treatment. So obviously antidepressants can be extremely useful, um, but there are other methods. And one of the things we're interested in in the course is to suggest the idea that um, mindful reading mm. or reading of poetry can help for some people, not for everybody, for some people. Have you ever had experience of, of, of a patient who you think has been helped by yes. the written word? I have. I had a number and I think... Um, Particularly in general practice, when I get to know my patients, you, you can talk about these. I know, uh, and they, I know when they'll want to talk about it. Also, when, when in, in their face of depression, it's in the grip of depression, I'm not going to start bringing up poetry. And, and that may be when antidepressants or, or um, talking therapies, um, psychology and counselling are most relevant. But in the longer term, the, also the prevention of, of further relapse into depression so taking the longer term view, and that's in many ways what mindfulness does, it's, it takes the longer term view, it's there as a preventative. If someone has, say, recurrent bouts of depression, how do we manage that in the future? So it's looking long, long term. Um, the writer Rachel Kelly, who writes a brilliant book about depression, Black Rainbow, says that poetry saved her from depression when nothing else worked. Um, have you ever come Yes, I and mean, I think I've got an example here. Um, a patient recently who um, has had a long, a long history of depression, um, and I've more recently been personally involved in different forms of uh, antidepressants. He's had, I know, different a range of different psychotherapeutic approaches, counselling, and they've all kind of helped. Um, but in his case, they haven't made the difference long term. Um, and I, I said, well, you know, what, what does make all the difference? What makes the difference? If anything has, what has? Which, which of those? And he said, actually, it was reading, it was writing, it was poetry. 